podcast. We'll get right into our conversation after a word from our sponsors. Big news, Paris Hilton fans. Your fave pop culture icon created her very own 3D interactive world, and she's inviting you to visit. Starting November 11th, transport yourself to Paris Hilton's Sliving Land, a place full of magic, fun, and surprises. Create an avatar, hunt for hidden treasure, unlock adorable digital outfits, even say hi to Paris herself. It's totally free. Everyone is welcome. Sign up today so you can jump right in when Paris's Sliving Land goes live on Friday, November 11th. Visit paris.world.co today. Life with migraine attacks can mean missing out on big moments with friends and family. Thankfully, there's Nurtec ODT Remegipant 75 milligrams, the only medication that's proven to treat a migraine attack and prevent episodic migraines in adults. Get back to enjoying life with Nurtec ODT, the all-in-one medication. Don't take if allergic to Nurtec ODT or any of its ingredients. The most common side effects were nausea, indigestion, and stomach pain. Talk to a doctor about Nurtec ODT. For important safety, prescribing, and patient information, visit nurtec.com. The best thing about the holidays might just be the get-togethers. The best thing about holiday shopping? Macy's has the looks for every event on your calendar. Make an entrance at your next party with vibrant jewel tones, perhaps a mauve velvet blazer, or maybe a royal blue halter dress. If you're more into fireside cocoa, a cozy novelty sweater can't be beat. No matter how you mix and match your holiday staples, you make it style. For all the inspiration you need, visit Macy's.com slash own your style. Today's guest isn't just on a personal healing journey, but is using her gifts, talents, and latest book to help others discover essential techniques for healing, cultivating innate strength, and finding tools to process difficult emotions. This week, I'm joined by Alex L., writer, wellness educator, and certified breathwork coach whose work centers on writing and self-care. She's the author of several books and journals, including After the Rain, Gentle Reminders for Healing, Courage, and Self-Love, and her brand new release, How We Heal, Uncover Your Power and Set Yourself Free. Alex and I discussed writing as a healing tool and the inspiration behind her latest book, The Power of Sisterhood and how to cultivate a community that feels non-judgmental, how to lean into your truth, and building an emotional toolkit. If something resonates with you while enjoying our conversation, please share it with us on social media using the hashtag TBG in session. Or join us over in the sister circle to talk more in depth about the episode. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. Here's our conversation. Thank you so much for joining us today, Alex. Thank you for having me. I'm a big fan. Thank you. We're excited to chat with you. So you do so many things. You are a writer, poet, wellness educator, and a certified breathwork coach. Can you tell me a little bit about what attracted you to writing and poetry as a medium? Oh, my goodness. So I've been writing since... I don't know, about age 10. I was an only child. So a lot of my creativity came out through writing short stories and poetry. But it wasn't until I turned 18 or 19. And I was connected with this amazing therapist who encouraged me to write to heal myself. And so in my emotional toolbox, she gave me a journal and said, keep this in your emotional toolbox and use this to be kind to yourself because all of my writing and storytelling was really rooted in sadness. And so it wasn't until I started writing to heal that I actually started to feel inspired by writing and also affirmed by writing. Mm, I love that. We love a good therapy origin story. So can you tell me more about what she shared about like how she felt like the writing would help to heal? So she told me that I needed to be my own greatest teacher and that for so long I had been looking outside of myself, which is the truth. I was 18, 19, 20, young, and really wanting validation from those around me, especially my parents. And so she was encouraging me to be the validation that I did not get or that I was not getting. And also positive self-talk, be kind to yourself, start there. And that was really foreign to me back then. But now it is what I do for a living. And it's just like, if she wouldn't have given me that tool, I don't think I would be here today. 
Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I love that. So we are definitely going to dive deep into your newest book, How We Heal. But you have so many other books and lots of great work that you have produced. Can you talk a little bit about how all of the other work that you've done has gotten you to this stage where you have now put out How We Heal? That's a really good question. I would have to say that my last book, actually, After the Rain, is really what shifted me to this phase in my career and in my life. After the Rain was a part memoir. My agent calls it a encapsulated memoir, where I talk about my origin story, like with my mother, how I learned self-love, how I learned self-hatred, and how I'm choosing to grow through some of the pain that I've gone through. The other books were notes to self and essay and poetry. But it really wasn't until I started talking about my own, like how I got here story that I was really able to use my growth to put me in the place to write How We Heal, because I'm a big believer that healing is a communal act, that healing is community care, it's an act of community service. And when we allow ourselves to heal and grow even after the rain and after our storms, we can pass that on by leading by example to other folks. You know, your work, I think, is so brave in a lot of ways, Alex, because you are sharing so much of your personal story on such a huge platform. And Mm -hmm. we've talked to other black women who are creatives and authors and do other kinds of work. And while it can be incredibly powerful, right, because it allows other people to see themselves and to really accept and honor their own stories, it often comes with a lot of needing to protect yourself. Like you're very vulnerable by mm-hmm. sharing some of the things that you've shared. Can you say a little bit about like what that process has been like and how you have taken care of yourself in the midst of that process? Oh my gosh. Well, that process looks like boundaries. Everything isn't for everyone. And I think when you are vulnerable, people think, oh my gosh, they're sharing everything. Like I know everything. And it's really like maybe a percent of my life that I share with folks. It's interesting that you brought this up because I had a friend tell me early on before I started sharing and writing books, and this was 10 years ago, 11 years ago now, and she said, you need to stop hoarding your happiness. You never know who needs you. And I was in a really different place then, and I was just insecure and scared. I'm like, who was going to read a book from me? Who is going to care about this? She goes, you don't know who needs you. And that was really my push to step out on bravery and courage and vulnerability, especially as a black woman. I mean, I was a teen mom. I had my first daughter. I was 18. I'm now married. I have two more daughters. And I've gone through my fair share of really deep pain and trauma. And to be on the other side of that and standing in a life that is fulfilling and rooted in ease and healing and joy, I think other black women need and deserve to see that, especially those of us who may have been teen mothers or who may have come from abusive homes, like to see that there is possibility and that there is healing, even if you're the first one in your lineage to be doing the healing. I think that is sacred. I don't take that for granted. I think that is God's work and universe's work to be able to use me in that way so that people can say, wow, she did that and I can do that. And that's really important to me. Mm -hmm. So tell me how How We Heal is different from the rest of your work. Like, what does the book cover? So the book is really my journey through writing to heal. And it's really a guide. It's a guide to finding your voice on the page, which is really special to me, especially as a facilitator. I mean, I've taught thousands of people writing to heal and how to really tap into their voice, not even to write books or anything like that, but just to get clear on their own wants and needs and healing. How We Heal is essentially that. And also there's different women in the book who I interviewed to break up the journaling prompts, to break up my stories and my teachings so that folks can see that healing is so diverse and it looks very different for everyone. It may not be writing to heal for you. It could be gardening. Like my friend Nedra glover Tawab is in the book. She's a therapist. And she talked about how being with her garden is healing. There are so many other amazing women in this book, like Morgan Harper Nichols and an Olympian who is really wonderful. Her name is Megan Rapino, And we're all different. And we're all sharing like what healing looks like for us and what taking care of ourselves looks like for us. So it was really important for me to give folks other views on what healing is. People know how I heal, but how we heal as a collective is so vast. And I think that's 
extremely beautiful to be able to say, hey, you may not resonate with this section of the book, but you may resonate with Nedra's story, or you may resonate with Tabitha Brown's story. Like, take what you need and leave what you don't. And also, I wanted How We Heal to be accessible. I've read a lot of books on healing and self-help, and I'm like, a lot of times I'm like, what are they saying? I don't understand. I know we're talking about intergenerational trauma, but like, how do I start peeling back the layers? So I wanted How We Heal to be a stepping stone of sorts for folks to have an accessible tool in language they can understand on how they can begin their journey. Mm -hmm. I think that that was very clear in in the (laughs) book. So I appreciate you sharing that. You mentioned your work as a facilitator of workshops around writing. I wonder if you can say a little bit about some of the common themes that you see with the women that you work with. Like, what are some of the struggles they have about, like, finding their voice on the page? Wanting to be seen, feel safe, and be supported. I call that my triple S, seen, safe, supported. And I ask folks often, what do you want to feel? What do you need? Who are you outside of your roles to other people? And it's hard for people to identify that, especially women, especially Black women, because we are so used to putting everybody else before ourselves and doing it with a smile on our face. I mean, I saw my grandmother do it. I saw my mother do it. And that's the theme. Like, wow, I don't even know how to center myself because I am so used to being everything to everyone and nothing to myself. I think something else that's really beautiful that I've experienced over the past six years of being a facilitator is that I have had folks age 16 all the way up to age 84. The last group that I taught, it was a grandmother, her granddaughters, and her daughter all came to a retreat that I was teaching. Grandma was 84 years old. And the message was still, I want to feel seen, safe, and supported. And that was really beautiful, like cross generations, cross cultural lines, we want to feel held. And so that's what I hear a lot of. Mm-hmm. And are you still doing those workshops? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yep. Nice, yep. nice. I love that. <laughs> and I wonder if there were some things that you saw in the stories from the women that you shared in the book. Like, were there some things that came up for you then? The themes were that this is hard work. This is intentional work. And it has to be a daily practice. Mm-hmm. That is the theme. That self-care and healing has to be something that we intentionally make space for. More from my conversation with Alex after the break. Big news, Paris Hilton fans. Your fave pop culture icon created her very own 3D interactive world, and she's inviting you to visit. Starting November 11th, transport yourself to Paris Hilton's Sliving Land, a place full of magic, fun, and surprises. Create an avatar, hunt for hidden treasure, unlock adorable digital outfits, even say hi to Paris herself. It's totally free. Everyone is welcome. Sign up today so you can jump right in when Paris's Sliving Land goes live on Friday, November 11th. Visit paris.world.co to today. I'm smiling more. I'm in a better mood. I feel like a huge weight's been lifted off my shoulders. And it's all since I paid off my high interest credit card debt with a loan from Happy Money. It's made such a huge difference. Now I'm saving money. My credit score has improved. And best of all, the anxiety is gone. At Happy Money, we believe money should be a tool for happiness, not a source of stress. We offer personal loans with low fixed rates and your best interests at heart. Use a Happy Money personal loan to eliminate your credit card debt and take that next step toward achieving your financial goals. Apply today at happymoney.com. Happy Money. Fund your happy. NMLS ID number 1396805. Not all applicants may qualify and results may vary. Loans are not offered in Massachusetts and Nevada. Happy Money works with lending partners who originate the loans. Additional terms, conditions, and eligibility requirements may apply. Okay, maybe you've made a list but haven't checked it twice or made a list at all. Get ahead of the holiday shopping rush with Macy's Gift Finder. Whether it's for mom, grandpa, or your BFF, the Macy's Gift Finder makes it so easy to get them their dream gift at any budget, from Lux to $15 and under. Find something for everyone at macys.com slash gift finder. Know who you're looking for, but stumped on what to get them? Browse curated shops and gift lists for the jet setters, the one who has everything, the pet parent, plus so many more. And hey, 
if you are proudly in the I can get my gift shopping done the night before camp, treat yourself. Maybe you need a new set of fluffy house slippers or want to set the holiday vibe with ornaments, lights, and wreaths. And don't forget your favorite R&R essentials, all of your favorite skincare products. Again, check out all the gifts to feel December ready at Macy's.com slash gift finder. So I was particularly excited to see you talk about sisterhood in the book, as I'm also writing about sisterhood. So you talked about non-judgmental safety net of sisterhood. Can you say a little bit about how sisterhood and community has been healing for you? Oh, my gosh. It just makes me feel held. It makes me feel held. And I cherish it so much because growing up, I was the only child. I didn't feel seen. I didn't feel held. And it wasn't until I went through this big transformation around age 22, 23, where I literally lost everybody, meaning I had to step away from who I used to know and who I used to be to step into who I wanted to be. And that is really where I found my core group of sister friends. And without judgment, without shame, without guilt, they hold me and I hold them. And I had never experienced that before. So having that chosen family and it be a safe space. I'm so grateful for and I feel like everybody needs sister friends. Like it is just so, so sacred. And to have also a neutral party, like even if we love each other, it's like, okay, I'm not in your relationship. You know what I mean? I'm not in your workplace. Like, how can I support you and be there for you in a way that makes you feel like you're not being judged? So, yeah. Mm -hmm. How have you been able to do that in your sister circle? Because I think that those are difficult conversations, right? Especially when you know somebody Mm -hmm. so intimately. Like, how do you cultivate a space that feels non-judgmental? I ask permission and they ask me permission. And we have boundaries. So before I give my two cents or my advice or before I give any type of response, I'll say, can I share something that I just noticed you say? Or, hey, I... I I need the space to say something, especially if like there may be a disagreement or there may be some odd energy in the air. Like, hey, I feel I feel something. Can we talk about it? And how I knew my sister friends were my sisters was that it was never met with dismissiveness, always met with yes. And that's because we feel safe with each other, like creating that emotional safety is so major. And I feel like all of us at one point felt like we didn't have that. So to have that with each other and to be choosing that intentionally has been, it's just a game changer. It's a Mm -hmm. game changer. Mm -hmm. I agree. I agree. So tell me, what are you most excited for people to read in the book? I actually am most excited for people to walk away feeling like they can trust themselves and like they have their answers, just like how my therapist, Miss B, all those years ago told me that I had my answers. I am excited for people to read my stories and feel like they're sitting down and talking with a friend. I am excited for people to learn different tools by way of writing and meditation and breath work and everything else in between and see what sticks and what helps them deepen their own practices. Like that's really what's exciting for me. Like I am a writer, but I'm a teacher first. And so getting people to lean into their truth is so, so, so important to me. And that's what I'm really most excited about. What work do you think needs to happen before people are ready to lean into the truth? Because I think a lot of people say that and then they see a little a little then, glimpse of the truth. They're like, oh, wait, let me back up. I'm not yep. actually ready for this. So what, what needs to happen before people are actually ready to, to face their truth? Oh, my goodness. Something that I say often is baby steps are still steps. And so taking the baby steps to see yourself to look at your trauma, but also to center your joy is really important for me. And that I want people to take that away from how we heal as well. Like, you don't always have to be in deep healing work. I often tell my clients and my students, you can be in the middle of your healing and that can look and feel neutral. You don't always have to be, you know, down and out or feeling like, oh, I made it over that thing. Sometimes you're just in the middle. And giving yourself permission to put your healing down I think is really step one in honoring your truth. Because maybe your truth is, I cannot deal with this today. 
you can come back to it. Your healing is always going to be there for you. I really do believe healing is a forever love and we'll be healing until we transition off of this earth. And I think that's actually a really beautiful thing. And I also want people to know that, especially black women, that we are allowed to center ourselves. We are allowed to center our joy and healing isn't just about our trauma. It's also about preparing for the happiness, being in the happy moments, even if we're in our hurting and just trusting that we are enough, even when the world tells us we are not. So you mentioned the hoarding happiness that came from one of your friends early, and you just mentioned it again. So it feels like something that maybe a lot of women struggle with, right? Like this always preparing for the the shoe to drop or the other shoe to drop. Talk a little bit about what kinds of things people can do if they find themselves struggling with really kind of hoarding their happiness or wanting to really allow happiness in their lives. Oh, my goodness. I'd like people to to really think about how that makes you feel. Do you feel whole, holding on to things? Do you feel easeful? Ease is one of my words of the year, easeful and clarity. Do you feel clear-minded and easeful with thinking that, okay, this is really not meant for me, or this is going to pass, or this is not mine, or I'm not worthy of it? And oftentimes people say, no, I don't feel good. I want to share my happiness. I want to be in joy with other people. I want to feel like this is meant for me and I can bask in it. And so if you're saying, you know, no, that doesn't feel good, I would just encourage you to try to look at the little things that do feel good. What does spark happiness for you and how can you share it not only with yourself, but with others? And how can you let yourself be in that? And I think reminding myself personally, like I am safe now. I am not in survival mode. I am allowed to hold this happiness. So, yeah, that's what I would say. Mm-hmm. So one of the other people that you included in the book is Dr. Tama Bryant, fellow colleague and psychologist. She shared her healing after a sexual assault. Why did you feel like it was important to, one, include her story, but also to include the voices of mental health professionals in the book? Dr. Tama is one of my absolute favorite humans on this planet. Her ease, her joy, and her reclamation of healing, it just is otherworldly. And I thought it was really important to include that story because she's not the only one with that story. And that is how we really create healing is sharing the thing that makes us feel most alone and realizing that we are not alone in our struggles. And to hear a psychologist, a proclaimed healer in this generation, talk about her trauma and how to come home to yourself after something that big and painful, that's moving. That's brave. That's vulnerability. And that is a door opener for other people, which is why I had her and everyone else contribute to this book. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Agreed. I definitely (laughs) think that, you know, again, like we talked about before, when we share our stories, it really does provide the space for other people to share there. So I completely agree with you there. Another feature of the book is that there are lots of journal prompts and, you know, spaces for people to kind of reflect on their own experiences. Can you say a little bit about how you came up with the prompts? And is there one that really sticks out to you that you would want to share with our community today? Yeah, so a lot of the prompts in How We Heal come from the coursework that I've taught. Over the pandemic, I taught about 15,000 folks, and each course was different every quarter. And so I pulled some things that really resonated with my community there. And also, as a Writing to Heal facilitator, I'm always thinking about, (laughs) okay, how can we make this a journal prompt to reflect on? And these are not super deep questions, y'all. They are very much get back to basic questions, which is really what I want people to understand is like, that's how we start our process by getting back to basics. So in every book that I've ever written are prompts in there because I really want folks to tap into their voice and their truth. The journaling prompt that's titled, What Are You Scared Of? is one of my favorite things because nobody likes to talk about their fears, myself included. It's scary. But something that I've realized in my journey is that befriending my fear has really helped me be in healthy partnership with it instead of trying to just hush it or turn away from it. So it says, what are you scared of? Now it's time to unpack what you're scared of so that you can begin to befriend your fear. In your journal, answer the following questions. What fear has been coming up for you the most these days? What is your first memory of this fear? How is it getting in the way of your healing? What would it feel like to befriend this fear and make it a part of your healing? 
So it's just giving people some reframe questions to think about, to look at. Maybe they'll be supportive, maybe they won't, but it's about the exploration. And that's what I think fear and healing need is to be explored and greeted with a curious mind. Yeah, that feels like an exercise you can come back to time and time again, right? Because of course, fears change Mm -hmm. throughout our lives. So that's one to revisit for sure. Yeah. So what was your inspiration in writing this book? Are there other authors or other books that you really looked to kind of, you know, pave the way for this one? No, it's really hard for me to read other people's work when I'm writing. I'm an avid reader. I'm an avid book collector. So I try to think about what book would I want to read and how we heal and like my other books, are kind of set up a little bit differently. There's a lot of breathing room in there with practices so that people can actually absorb the work and then do their own. So I knew that I wanted this book not to be in chapters, but to be in sections. So there's four main sections. I knew that I wanted within the sections to be not only my stories and teachings, but the other women that I interviewed for this book and the meditations and journaling, etc. So I wanted this book to feel easeful. I want this book to be one that people come back to time and time again. I want people to keep it out. I mean, it's a very beautiful book. I don't know if you have the hard copy, but it's a very beautiful book. So I want people to keep it out, to reach for it, keep it by their nightstand, gift it to others. So all in all, I just really wanted it to be and feel accessible, not just say that it is, but actually have a tool that is what it's supposed to be. Mm-hmm. More from my conversation with Alex after the break. Big news, Paris Hilton fans. Your fave pop culture icon created her very own 3D interactive world, and she's inviting you to visit. Starting November 11th, transport yourself to Paris Hilton's Sliving Land, a place full of magic, fun, and surprises. Create an avatar, hunt for hidden treasure, unlock adorable digital outfits, even say hi to Paris herself. It's totally free. Everyone is welcome. Sign up today so you can jump right in when Paris's Sliving Land goes live on Friday, November 11th. Visit paris.world.co to Today. At Happy Money, we believe money can be a tool for happiness and to help you accomplish your goals. Like when a Happy Money personal loan helps you eliminate credit card debt and saves you money on interest. Yeah, that kind of happy. When you're stuck with high interest payments and no end date in sight, that revolving credit card debt can turn money into a source of stress and anxiety. That's why Happy Money offers personal loans up to $40,000 with low fixed rates. Checking your rate is free and won't impact your credit score. How's that for happy? Take that next step toward financial freedom and accomplishing your goals. Personal loans with your best interests at heart. Apply today at happymoney.com. Happy Money. Fund your happy. NMLS ID number 1396805. Not all applicants may qualify and results may vary. Loans are not offered in Massachusetts and Nevada. Happy Money works with lending partners who originate the loans. Additional terms, conditions, and eligibility requirements may apply. Okay, maybe you've made a list but haven't checked it twice. Or made a list at all. Get ahead of the holiday shopping rush with Macy's Gift Finder. Whether it's for mom, grandpa, or your BFF, The Macy's Gift Finder makes it so easy to get them their dream gift at any budget, from Lux to $15 and under. Find something for everyone at Macy's.com slash gift finder. Know who you're looking for, but stumped on what to get them? Browse curated shops and gift lists for the jet setters, the one who has everything, the pet parent, plus so many more. And hey, if you're proudly in the I can get my gift shopping done the night before camp, treat yourself. Maybe you need a new set of fluffy house slippers or want to set the holiday vibe with ornaments, lights, and wreaths. And don't forget your favorite R&R essentials, all of your favorite skincare products. Again, check out all the gifts to feel December ready at Macy's.com slash gift finder. So you opened up our conversation talking about, you know, how a lot of your writing came from that original therapy assignment. Can you say a little bit about how you have worked with mental health professionals in your own healing journey? And especially as writing books, like, you know, because I'm in the midst of edits for my first book, a lot of my therapy sessions are now about the book. So I'm curious to hear, you know, what kinds of mental health assistance you've had throughout your life, but also as you've been writing all these books. So I went back to therapy last year. And it was interesting writing How We Heal because I was in the midst of my own deep, deep emotional healing. And my therapist just said, be patient with yourself. 
You don't have to have the answers. And I already know these things, right? But it's nice to have someone reminding me like, hey, girl, relax. It's okay. So having a neutral party when I need mental health maintenance, not just when I'm having these big moments in my life has been so helpful because sometimes we're not going through big things where we need to be unpacking, right? But sometimes we are like, yo, I don't know what's going on. I just need some mental health maintenance. I need a neutral party who is going to ask me some tough questions and also just let me talk. So that's really how I was supported through How We Heal. It's like my therapist just listening, asking me some questions, reflecting back to me and helping me not overthink because I tend to be an overthinker. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That feels familiar. (laughs) (laughs) So do you feel like you learned anything new about yourself from writing this book versus the books in the past? Oh, that's a good question. I think that this book solidified that I have a lot more healing to do and that each stage of healing looks and feels different. It's kind of seasonal. So this season of my healing when I was writing How We Heal was, it was hard. I mean, I have three children. I have a husband. We were home during the the pandemic. I had to go to Starbucks a lot of nights and be there until they closed because that's the only time I could write the book, you know? And so when I was there by myself with my thoughts, writing stories about my first experience with big fear that happened with my biological father or writing stories about making my favorite peach cobbler and not getting the response that I wanted or needed from my mother at the time or all these different things that I thought I was over, but I'm still healing from. This book has shown me that I need to pay closer attention to those small things, to those tender things. And to not judge myself for it, to not judge myself for being 33 years old, still struggling with something that happened when I was seven. It's like, how do we heal ourselves and our inner child? And how do we give ourselves grace as we move through the different seasons of our healing? Mm -hmm. So I think that there's something particularly powerful about having daughters and being able to kind of have this work as they get older, right? So what would you like for them to take from your books? Oh, my goodness. I would like them to take self-trust from my books, to stand bravely in their truth, and to know that they are their own person, they are their own safe space, with or without the validation of others, including me and their dad. I'm really glad you asked that, because I have a 14-year-old, she'll be 15 in November, and she is such a self-aware kind, sweet, creative kid. And she's really sure of herself. And it's just like, wow, seeing her is seeing my healing. And it's absolutely phenomenal. And she trusts herself in a way that I didn't at her age. And it, it's like, oh, I'm doing something right. I'm raising humans. I'm raising young black girls to know their worth from jump. It's so it's so funny because my husband, um, he always at, he tells Charlie, who's our oldest, he goes, remember who you are. You're a big dog. You're a big dog. So when she goes to school and she gets so embarrassed, it's like, who are you today? She's like, I'm a big dog, Papa. I'm a big dog. <laughs> <laughs> but she believes it. So and even when she's having her moments of like she's an artist and she gets really frustrated with her when her paintings or sketches don't come out. And she's like, it's okay. I'm a big dog. And it's just hilarious, but it's like, there's her affirmation. I'm a Mm -hmm. big dog. And so it's just like, I don't know. I'm just sharing that silly story because it's just not always heavy. Sometimes it's just light Mm -hmm. and we are allowed to be lighthearted and we are capable of raising children who know themselves. Mm -hmm. And that's so powerful. It really is. And even in you sharing that small example, like you can see how the voice in our head is from my parents often, right? So her even repeating, I'm a big dog, like you think is very silly, but she's holding on to it. Mm -hmm. Um, So I think it's just a beautiful example of how our voice then becomes the voice in our kids' heads uh, very often. Very often. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. So what have you learned from your own healing and writing journey that you could share with others who may be kind of starting the process of using writing to heal? Mm. That I have no answers. I know nothing. (laughs) And that I am a forever student of life. And I actually really love that. I didn't used to. I would be like, dang, I thought I learned that already. I thought I healed (laughs) from that already. But here I am. 
And instead of beating myself up over not knowing or thinking, because growing up, we hear like, oh, you should know better. You should know better. Right. And I'm like, I don't know better. Sometimes I don't know better. And that is okay. And I can give myself grace for not knowing better. And I can give myself grace for still having to heal through things that I thought I already healed from. And so that is, you know, I think my biggest takeaway is like, it's okay to not know better and that we can continue to learn and be curious so that we can gain the knowledge to do better as we grow. Mm -hmm. Beautifully said. So where can we stay connected with you, Alex? Where can we grab the book? Where can we find your website as well as any social media handles you'd like to share? Yeah, so my website is alexl.com. You can find all the links to How We Heal. It's very much in your face. (laughs) I'm going on tour in November. I'll be going to seven cities. I would love to see folks there. Tour dates are also on alexl.com. I have a podcast called This Morning Walk, and it is one of my favorite things. It's co-hosted with the lady who got me walking over a year ago, so it's really awesome and very healing. And on Instagram, I'm just at alex. Facebook. I think it's Alex L F B. And yeah, I'm always open to an email. So you can hit the contact tab on my website and there. And if you want to come to retreat with me, you can find all of that on alexl.com too. Perfect. We will be sure to include all of that in the show notes. (laughs) Thank you so much for chatting with us today, Alex. I really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. This was great. I'm so glad Alex was able to share her expertise with us today. To learn more about her or to grab a copy of How We Heal, visit the show notes at therapyforblackgirls.com slash session 283. And don't forget to text two of your girls and tell them to check out the episode right now. If you're looking for a therapist in your area, check out our therapist directory at therapyforblackgirls.com slash directory. And if you want to continue digging into this topic or just be in community with other sisters, come on over and join us in the sister circle. It's our cozy corner of the internet designed just for Black women. You can join us at community.therapyforblackgirls.com. This episode was produced by Frida Lucas and Elise Ellis, and editing was done by Dennis and Bradford. Thank y'all so much for joining me again this week. I look forward to continuing this conversation with you all real soon. Take good care. Big news, Paris Hilton fans. Your fave pop culture icon created her very own 3D interactive world, and she's inviting you to visit. Starting November 11th, transport yourself to Paris Hilton's Sliving Land, a place full of magic, fun, and surprises. Create an avatar, hunt for hidden treasure, unlock adorable digital outfits, even say hi to Paris herself. It's totally free. Everyone is welcome. Sign up today so you can jump right in when Paris's Sliving Land goes live on Friday, November 11th. Visit paris.world.co today. Since I paid off my credit card debt with a loan from Happy Money, I'm saving money, my credit score is improved, and the anxiety is gone. Happy Money offers personal loans with low fixed rates and your best interests at heart. Apply today at happymoney.com. Happy Money. Fund your happy. NMLS ID number 1396805. Not all applicants may qualify. Loans are not offered in Massachusetts and Nevada. Happy Money works with lending partners who originate the loans. Additional terms, conditions, and eligibility requirements may apply. Do you want to win two tickets to the FIFA World Cup 2022 in Qatar? Frito-Lay is giving you the chance to make history by joining their Pass the Ball Challenge. Explore the ever-growing community on the Golden World Soccer Ball. Then, pass the ball to fellow fans to score additional entries. Scan the QR code on specially marked bags of Lay's, Cheetos, or Doritos, or visit Frito-LaySCore.com. No purchase necessary. Open to legal residents of 50 USDC. 18 plus grand prize entry deadline, 11-10-22. Entries received after 11-10-22 are only eligible for secondary prizes. See rules at Frito-LaySCore.com.